Buster. Dharma Master, parents and teachers, and all students. I was asked to give you some advice today in this graduation. But many of you, I'm sure, have received a lot of advice from your parents, from your teacher, from your friends. So I will not want to give you any advice today. Is that okay? <laughs> As graduate from this school, especially for this year, you are all special because you are educated in a place that there is no place like this. You have learned things from that students from the other school do not even know. You have taught the principle that students in other school do not ever heard of. And that is why I think all of you are very, very special. And let me explain. I have been working as an engineer, as an educator, as a professor for more than 45 years. What I have observed in the past several years is the current education system has failed many, many students. The goal of education in many schools today has been narrowed down to win, win, and win at all costs. And that is why many schools have been focusing on developing students to win without any moral character. These students are taught to compete, to fight, to get ahead at all costs. And these students have no idea of loyalty, morality, honesty, Respect, righteousness. In many of these schools, students are competing for grade and even cheating to pass exam. When working, these students are competing for better salary and better positions without any shame. In life, they compete for more money, bigger house, better car, and they continue to compete all their life with no remorse. But you are all special. Because in the school, you are taught to develop a solid foundation and especially building a very strong character. You understand the principle of proprietary, of righteousness, honesty, loyalty, filiality, and compassion. You learned about certain principles such as not fighting, not to be greedy, not to lie. Sometimes by others looking at that, it seems like you are not competitive enough. But please do not let it discourage you. And let me explain. When I was working as a young engineer, there, is a, there was a promotion in the company. And many, many engineers won that position. Can you imagine the competition among these people? Many people used to work together in harmony, but suddenly they look at each other as the enemy. Many of them are fighting, backstabbing, political maneuvering, and the working place had become ugly every day. Seeing that in fightings among those people who used to be friends, and I told them that I'm not interested in that position, and I'm not going to apply for that, even though I'm the most qualified person. <clears throat> Knowing that I'm not competing, so these people leave me alone. And they continue to fight for the position to the point that they no longer be able to work together. And that impact the business of the company. And they make it known that they were not going to work with each other if the other person got the job. So you can see that the working environment had become a battlefield. The senior manager knowing that, so they had to find someone who are neutral, who can work with everybody. Guess who the 
this cell out. And that is why every time I recite the principle of no fighting, I always think of this experience. Several years later, I'm moving up to a very senior position, very important position, and I manage a project that worth millions of dollars. These are very complex projects. So every six months, the customer will come in and review to make sure that the project is progressing accordingly because it is vital, important to the business. Every year, twice a year, the customer will come in and review the project because they are afraid that if the project fails, that's a lot of things will be impacted. But one year, the project is not progressing as well as we expected. The data indicate that the project may fail. And if that project failed, the entire business of the customer could be collapsed. Fearing that situation, and after several attempts to fix the problem to no avail, the project manager come to me and say, no one know. All you have to do is make some small modification on some of the data to make the project look much better. Then we can fix it later. Because if we don't do that, all of us may lose the job. Of course, I refuse. I can't do that. I can't change and I can't make the modification. So the project manager was very, very angry. So he transferred me to another project and said, well, after this fixing, I'll fight you. I'm prepared to accept the loss. I'm prepared to get fired. When the customer coming in, uh, the manager finds somebody else to, to do all of that. When the customer coming in, they begin to ask questions, they begin to inquire to that, and they find out a lot of inconsistency among the data. So they began to ask more and more questions, and finally they launched an investigation of the project. The investigation found out that data had been changed, had been modified to look at better. So the customer was very angry with the company. Senior executive was calling in. We're talking about $100 million project. So a lot of manager and engineer get fired. After that, they had to find somebody who can manage the project accordingly, with integrity. <coughs> Guess who they set up? <laughs> so every time I think about the principle of not lying, I think about that lesson. And after work, we was able to fix the project and after the project completed successfully, I was moving up to a much more higher position. Basically, the top position in the company. Every time I recite the principle, I also ask myself, what happens if I lie? What happens if I do not keep the principle? I may go to jail. So as to this, many of you have goals in life. But no matter what goal that you select and you choose, these goals can be achieved through three things. Knowledge, experience, and character. Through education and learning, anyone can develop the knowledge. Through working experience in life, everyone can get and obtain experience. But character is something can only be developed through a proper education. Of course, your parents have helped you to build your character when you was young. Then they send you over here to continue to develop that character of goodness and virtue. Personally, I think character is everything. If you have a moral character, you can do anything, everything, right. People with moral characters can do anything and everything. And if they fail, if they not succeed, they would not be able, they would not accept any criticism 
because they already do their best. They will continue to do what they believe in and not preoccupy with that failures. They learn from their failure and they move on. They believe in themselves without any question, any doubting, any fearing, because they know what is right and what is wrong. The education that all of you receive here will give you that solid foundation and for that positive character. All of you are the future leader of this country. All of you are the future people who will help our country to prosper, help the Buddha Dharma to prosper in the future. And that is why I think all of you are very special. So congratulations to all of you for the class of 2019 and all future students in this school. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Arigato.